We do have about 10 to 15 seats up here if anybody needs to sit down or wants to sit down. And uh, as soon as we get confirmation on the stream going, we'll get started, okay? All right, All right welcome everybody. Uh, it is an exciting day here for Eagle Athletics. Uh, first off, I would like everyone to please silence or turn off your cell phone so we do not have any disruptions. Uh, we do encourage you to take pictures and share them socially. Uh, this is a big day for us, so we'd love for everybody to be a part of it on social media. Um, our format today is we will have an opening statement from co-chair of the search committee, Mr. Anthony Tippins. Uh, he will introduce President Marrero, who will then introduce our new athletic director. Uh, we will then open it up to questions for everybody for the media. Uh, if you guys could just raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone, and please introduce yourself so that Jared can have a chance to get to know faces and names. Uh, media will then go outside for some one-on-ones. And then at that point, uh, we'll break. We do have a basketball game tonight, so we hope that everybody can come join us tonight as the Eagles make their march to a Sun Belt Championship. So with that, with that said, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce one of our co-chairs, Mr. Anthony Tippins. Thank you, Brian. In the interest of staying on time and on track, I've made a few notes, but uh, what a what an exciting time in Georgia Southern uh, history right now, and what an honor it was to serve and be a part of this process alongside 21 other uh, search committees that uh, share the same passion and love for Georgia Southern. Thank you, Dr. Moreira, for allowing me to be a part of the process and serve as the committee co-chair. I'd like to extend a thank you to Lenny Leonard Bevel, uh, who also served as co-chair of this 22-person search committee and uh, helping drive the process. Leonard and I had great debates and conversations over the past two months, so thank you, Leonard. Um, thank you to each, of, each member of the search committee. We had 22 members that made up this search committee. Uh, and we thank you for your time, your talents, your knowledge, and your experience, and, and, more, and more than anything, your excitement and passion around seeing Georgia Southern continue to grow and succeed as we move into this next chapter of ath athletic department. Thank you to Lee Price and Lee Ashley for keeping us and the committee on track and organized. And uh, last but not least, thank you to Glenn Sugiyama of the DHR team, uh, DH International team for your experience, your candidate pool, and your proactive, that you proactively brought forward. We had lots of great candidates in this process from a lot of great programs across a lot of great universities across the nation. Uh, so thank you, Glenn. Now for the process, just to touch on a few of the points. In early January, we began the search process for our next directors of athletics. Dr. Marrero and the university engaged a consulting firm, DHR International, to lead this process, and then we quickly moved to assembling a team of 22 search committees made up of representatives from across Georgia Southern University from our community, our administration, our faculty, our athletic foundation, past chairman, our university foundation, student athletes, uh, our former athletes, coaches, and trainers made up the 22 member search committee. So a great uh, diverse background of, of our search committees. We began gathering feedback from many folks throughout Eagle Nation, meetings, phone calls, emails, texts, and yes, even social media. Um, and across all areas, and we defined a list of attributes that we wanted to see in our next uh, athletics director. Once agreed upon uh, the, with the entire search committee mid-January, it was off to the races with interviews. Our first set of face-to-face -face interviews began in Anaheim, California over several days. A number of us went out and met with a list of candidates in parallel and on a continuous basis. DHR uh, provided uh, continuous screening and filtering 
of candidates based on the attributes that we defined. We had great interviews in California and with a very impressive candidates, and then we moved the process back to Georgia. And just last week, I'm happy to say, we brought the eight finalists that, uh, that made the list back to Atlanta along with the entire 22-person search committee to conduct the final interviews with the search committee and with as, uh, as well as one-on-one -on -one interviews with Dr. Marrero. Afterwards, we all met as a team. We vigorously discussed the attributes and experience of the top three candidates, which, by the way, we had consensus on in complete alignment. We compared this to the qualities and attributes that we first defined back in early January. Every committee member's voices and opinions were heard, and I have to really give a special credit and a shout out and thank you to Shy Wirtz and Ashley Cabell for representing the student athletes, over 400 student athletes at Georgia Southern, represented us very well. In fact, their opinions made a difference. Uh, let's see. Throughout the entire two-month process, there were conference calls, phone calls, meetings, and good, healthy debate. And I can thank the entire search, can't thank the entire search committee enough for all that they have contributed as well as every candidate that we met with. Each one provided additional insight uh, to the challenges and opportunities that uh, our next AD could potentially have. In closing, I'm happy to say that after this process, we, the entire 22-person search committee, had complete consensus on one candidate. This candidate met the attributes we defined back in, in January, the entire search committee agreed upon. But just as important, we strongly felt that this one candidate was the perfect fit for Georgia Southern. That was very important in the process, defining the person that made the fit. And we also felt like he understood the winning traditions, the blue collar mentality, the do more with less, and just as important, the do right culture of Georgia Southern University. And also this candidate understood the strong passion and expectations of Eagle Nation. This one candidate stood out, not only wanted, but was clearly qualified, experienced, and excited about the challenge and opportunity presented to him. With that, I'll introduce our great president and leader of Georgia Southern so that he can have the honor formally introducing our next athletics director. Well, it's indeed an exciting day, an exciting day for Georgia Southern, for the Eagle Nation. As Anthony said, we went through a process, a process that I knew as president, a relatively new president, the 14th president of Georgia Southern, who began, uh, it'll be a year, just coming up in a few weeks, that this hire was going to be important to all of us, to the future of Georgia Southern and the way in which we'd move forward within a strategic plan, a way in which we would know we would have impact, not just today, but in the future. And for us, uh, Anthony talked about the attributes. And I thought I'd share that with you just because I want you to know how much we thought about this. Uh, I sat down uh, right after we knew we'd be searching and I, I crafted an email to, to Glenn with DHR and I wanted him to hear specifically what I wanted to see in a new athletic director besides a big S on his, his or her shirt and then a cape. But uh, it was important that we had the right fit. We wanted somebody with NCAA D1 FBS experience. Check. We wanted a demonstrator, demonstrated leader with management success uh, within an idea of evidence-based leadership, a culture of high performance, measurable outcomes, and a single point of accountability. Check. We knew this person needed to be committed and have a track record of student-athlete success, both academic, health and wellness, inclusion, leadership, character development, and community service. Check. We needed this person to understand, appreciate, embrace, and cultivate the history, traditions, and legacy of Georgia Southern athletics. Check. We wanted somebody that knew about resources and revenue to have a proven track record in fundraising, donor cultivation, and relations, and resource development in every way in which we could build revenue and sponsorships, ticket sales, and promotions. Check must have NCAA compliance acumen and understanding of institutional and system policy. Check. Must have experience, knowledge, and athletic facility operations and management. Check. Innovative and committed to efficiency and effectiveness of operations, making the most out of every dollar. And this candidate said in his interview, I treat every dollar like it's my own. I loved that. 
<laughs> budget, budget knowledge and acumen understanding of all sorts of funds and colors of money. As a member of the President's Cabinet, my leadership team at the institution must be committed and engaged in the institutional vision, mission, and bring an overall institutional perspective to Georgia Southern Athletics. Check. Needs to be a people person. And if you have not talked to Jared Banco yet, you're going to find out quickly. He is a people person, a master communicator and presenter, and a unifier of the old guard and the new. Check. And finally, someone that would provide a clear, attainable vision for the future of Georgia Southern Athletics and the implementation strategy to achieve that vision. Well, folks, I think we have found the perfect fit for our athletic director at Georgia Southern. He comes with a world of experience, roots in Georgia. He knows Georgia, knows its people. Started at University of Georgia which in some cases we know you can't have a red tie anymore. You've got to put that aside. I'm sorry. All mine are in the back of the closet, never to see the light of day again, so you'll join me in that. But began there, went on to Arkansas as Director of Business Operations, as Athletic Business Manager at University of Auburn, as Assistant Athletic Director, head of finance there. And the last stop before he is joining us, April 1st, uh, is currently as Mississippi State Deputy Director of Athletics and Chief Financial Officer. We feel like we have hit a home run. We have found the person that's a perfect fit, our new athletic director, and my opportunity to provide for him a gift as we welcome his family, Sarah, oldest Hudson, six years old, and Cooper, four years old, over here with his family. Welcome to Eagle Nation and Georgia Southern. And I want to honor you here with a number 20 jersey, because 2020 is when you started and when you will be with us now for the future. As Georgia Southern's athletic director, may I present to you Jared Benko. Turn the jersey. Oh, yeah, it says Benko. There we go. <laughs> to free. That jersey's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it fits. So, Hey, uh, Dr. Marrero, thank you for your comments. Uh, it means more than you know. Uh, it's a good afternoon, everyone. It's a great day to be an Eagle. Uh, from the administration to the community to the media, thank you for being here. I want to quickly touch on three things, and I promise not to wear you out. The first is gratitude. The second is the Eagle Way. And the third is my mission for Georgia Southern. I'm going to start with gratitude. I cannot express the gratitude I feel for so many people in this room today and those that can be with us. But first and foremost, as my grandmother Joanne Brock would say, all glory to God. Um, he's been pretty darn good to me. So, uh, Next is Dr. Marrero. Thank you for affording me this wonderful opportunity. You're a big, big reason I'm here. I've learned that you can't put a premium on aligning yourself with not only great people, but leaders of industry. And I'm just really excited to work on your leadership team and with your leadership group. So, Don Marrero is a visionary leader and is someone that I'm very much looking forward to working alongside. I owe a great debt of gratitude to, to Leonard Bevel and Anthony Tippins. Thank you for your help and, and guidance in this process. And Glenn Sugiyama with DHR, appreciate your, uh, your help as well. It was something very early on the passion for Georgia Southern Athletics and Georgia Southern University was evident to me, and that really got me fired up, quite honestly, and the energy was contagious. And I also want to make sure, before I forget, I think she's on jury duty today, but Lisa Sweeney, I want to thank her for her help as well and appreciate her leadership during the interim period. So with that, if you'll indulge me a little bit, I want to recognize a couple people in the audience. Sarah, thank you for, for being here and for your unlevering uh, love and support of me and our family. and. We started this journey almost nine years ago, and so I can't thank you enough, and, and you're the bedrock of the family, and you're a great, you're a great mom and great dad, and it's been the best years of my life, so thank you. So, uh, Hudson and Cooper, y'all coloring over there? Coloring? <laughs> yeah. Listen, boys, I love you, and I already told Coach uh, Hennon that he's going to have two bat boys ready for him already. In fact, I think we already have some game balls from last night, so we're, we're excited to get here. Mom and Dad, thanks for being here today. 
Thank you for your sacrifices uh, and, and instilling the right values and morals in me growing up. I wouldn't be here today without you, so thank you so much. Love you both. Coleman and Carrie, my brother and sister, are here today. Thank you for making the trip down from Watkinsville. It means a lot for you all to be here. I love you both. But I would be remiss to not mention some other men and women in college athletics and higher education that I want to thank as well, and people that have had an incredible impact on my life. I believe that we have an obligation to mentor, teach, and serve others. And so people like John Cohen, Scott Strickland, David Benedict, Carla Williams, Jay Jacobs, Clayton Hamilton, John Fagg, Julie Cromer, Claude Felton, and so many more people have had an indelible mark on me. And I, I really, I'm here to pay it forward. So I hope I have the opportunity going forward to, to work along with some great uh, coworkers and help uh, build them up and help them develop. That leads me to my second point, the Eagle Way. One of the most special things to me about Georgia Southern is a great synergy and alignment between academics and athletics. Our young men and women are students first and athletes second. And I'm fired up today. I saw that we had some, some of the sports back there, some of the student athletes. We had soccer. I think we saw swimming and diving. Had a couple. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all taking the time to come out. To me, the embracement of this total student athlete process is huge and something I'm really excited to be here for. I grew up, there's also talking about the tradition. I grew up hearing stories about Coach Eric Russell, several of them, had pictures of them, and I just, I can't tell how much I appreciate that uh, history here. The Dirty Dozen, beautiful Eagle Creek. I look forward to when, when the, uh, the water goes down and it gets a little warmer, getting officially baptized in Eagle Creek. We're going to hold off on that for a month or two, a little bit, <laughs> a little warmer. Um, offense was the Georgia Power Company, and the rate hike was, was uh, excuse me, the snap count was a rake hike. So GATA, I mean, the history goes on and on. You have a legacy of national championships and people like Jack Stallings and John Tudor, Tracy Ham's in the house today, Adrian Peterson, uh, Paul Johnson, Tukey Brown. I can go on and on. So to me, the history speaks for itself. And really, uh, to me, I can't tell you how more proud I am to be here. My last point is the mission for Georgia Southern. I had a chance to speak to our staff earlier today, and I touched on three guiding principles, or as they say in college athletics, culture. Blue collar work ethic. All right, that's something I embrace and how I was raised. So we're going to have that blue-collar work ethic. We're going to do more or less. But here's the cool thing about that. We're also going to find ways to generate more revenue. And we're going to find ways to think outside the box. And I'll touch on innovation here in a little bit. But we're going to combine the, the uh, blue-collar mentality and also look forward to some, some cool things. The other thing I'll tell you, too, is you know, we're talking about hard work, which I think is a bedrock, again, of Georgia Southern Athletics. To me, I had a chance growing up working landscaping and also working on roofing jobs in high school. And as a teenager, I was probably 140 pounds soaking wet, uh, getting up there early in the morning, uh, going up ladders, carrying shingles, and, and laying outside after it rained. And I tell you, there were times that, that, quite honestly, at early age, I wanted to quit and not finish the job. And I think my parents were instilling me that hard work and that work ethic to finish the job and not quit. And uh, there were times, quite honestly, I wanted to. And that, that, that has instilled and stayed with me for a long time. And so whether it be a week or a month or a year later, I know that I'd finished the job and made an impact on people. And so that hard work, and that blue-collar work ethic is something I fully believe. We're also, I touched on the staff by being a servant leader, having that servant leader mentality. We're first and foremost here to serve our student athletes. All right, and that's our coaches, our staff, our donors, and our supporters and fans and alumni. So that, that's, that's the second core tenet. And the third is innovation. To me, this is something, this innovation is going to be ingrained in everything we do. Uh, we will celebrate our history, but we'll strive to be cutting edge and really going to be thinking outside the box and a lot of stuff. And I think you're already starting to see some things. And going forward, I'm excited to, to roll some more things out as well. I'm going to close by saying I know this is a tremendous opportunity and it's one that carries great responsibility, and I will not let you down. I'm humbled. I'm honored to be the next leader of this prestigious athletic department. Sarah and I are beyond thrilled to raise our family in a small, close-knit community. Uh, you know, to me, Statesboro is a place we, we want to raise our kids and establish roots and be here a long time. So we're really excited about getting in the community and being here as a family. So thank you already for, for welcoming us. And the last three things I want to hit on again is gratitude, the Eagle Way, and our mission for Georgia Southern. And that about sums it up. Our best days are ahead. I can't wait to get to work. Thank you again for allowing me to be here today with you in GATA. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the long-term future for Georgia Southern Athletics is going to look like under your leadership? 
Yes, I mean, t to me, I, I would tell you one of the things that coming in here is, is you hear it quite often, the, the listening tour, and you want to come in and listen and learn kind of where we're at. I would tell you we're going to be really forward-thinking everything we do. That's from social media, that's to fundraising, revenue generation, to facilities, to making sure, most importantly, we have a great student-athlete experience. So we'll have a chance at some point to talk about strategic alignment and strategic planning with Dr. Marrero and his staff. And so I'm going to marry our strategic plan to the universities. And so it would be obtuse to sit here today and tell you, when things are going to happen, but I will tell you, we're going to be forward thinking in everything we do, and that really excites me because to me, we have the ability, uh, not only here in Statesboro, but with the Savannah market and the chance to embrace the, Arms the Armstrong Atlantic uh, alumni as well, and even up to Atlanta, we have we have all the ingredients for a lot of success here. So really, to me, it's going to be bridge building and making sure we've got everybody pulling on the same side of the rope. And with that alignment, uh, we're going to do some really special things here. I would tell you it's a combination of uh, history and potential. And so to me, what excites me about this position in this university is our best days are ahead. I wouldn't be here today if I felt differently. And so to me, I have a healthy respect. I, f I spent the first 29 years of my life in the state of Georgia. And to me, Georgia Southern embodied who I felt like I was. It was that blue collar, in your face, we're going to fight you tooth and nail every time we, we, we play off on the, on the different course of the playing fields. And so for me, there was an alignment between who I am as a person and ultimately, it's a great opportunity. And so, you know, the personal side to me is very easy. We really enjoy living in a small town community, and that really aligned with our values of raising two young boys. And so, to me, I think the better question is why would I not want this opportunity? Because I think there's so much, so much optimism and so much uh, leadership here with Dr. Moreau and his staff. We, you know, we have the future is so bright, and I just can't wait to, to get started. So. Jared, Jake Wallace with WTOC out of Savannah. What's priority number one for you when you start April 1? Yeah, sure. It's, it's getting, to, getting to know the personnel and the, and the student athletes. I think that's the first. We have, we have probably, I guess, four to six weeks before school lets out and really want to get a chance to get in front of the student athletes as much as I can. I had a chance this weekend to text with a few of them and had a great weekend, by the way. I mean, that was a terrific weekend. I, I hope we can, uh, I'd love to sit here and tell you we're going to be undefeated every weekend, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, um, but no, I think it's an opportunity to really get in front of them. We'll have a chance, too, to talk with staff and personnel and really want to get a chance to continue to get to know Dr. Morero and his staff and, and really be on campus and, and in the community. Because to me, it's, it's very easy. Sometimes if you let it to stay in just athletics and get to know uh, the important components of, of athletics, but it's really important, too, to get out on campus side in the community and see our fans and supporters. And listen, we have some of the most loyal supporters and fans in the country. In fact, I, I think the passion for Georgia, all things Georgia Southern really uh, inspire me to propel and obviously want to apply for this job because to me I think it's just one of the best opportunities in the country. So. Anything else? William Baxley, uh, Savannah Morning News and also hey, Georgia Southern. Um, yeah. Out of these other schools, at Mississippi State, at Auburn, there's, you know, it's football's the driving force, but also the success and passion for other, yeah. you know, non-football sports. What parallels do you see from Georgia Southern to these other, you know, bigger SEC schools? Yeah, I would say comprehensive excellence across all 17 sports. And so to me, it's easy to focus on, on football, and football is that the schools I've been at a big revenue driver. But we talk every day about comprehensive excellence in and out of the classroom. So you think about like, the cornerstones of our program are going to be academic excellence and graduation and preparing for life after sport. And of course, you know, obviously competing for championships. And so to me, that competitive drives there. And it's also to be there, not just football, not just basketball and baseball and a few other sports. It's all 17 sports. And so my goal as a director of athletics is to, is to continue to position our student athletes and coaches for success. And that looks differently for each sport, right? But, but part of that's come in and trying to work with our coaches and staff and figure out a game plan to help them out. And really, I'm here to serve our student athletes and our coaches. And so I'll do anything I can uh, to help them. So. Hi, uh, welcome. Um, Nathan Dominus, sports hey. editor of the Spring Morning News. Um, you worked at some very big programs, SEC programs. Yeah. Um, was there a template? Uh, somebody, you mentioned a lot of uh, past uh, sports information directors, athletic directors. Yeah. 
Was there a template where you said that's the vision that I'd like to have here that you've seen in your experience? I think the, I think one of the, the great qualities and been blessed to work with a lot of great uh, administrators and, and people in athletics is to really, I would say, take best practices from every place you've been at and bring them here. Again, it'd be obtuse to say, hey, this is round peg, square hole type mentality. And so one of the great things I feel like that I bring to the table is I can take the best practices of the four SEC schools I've been at and bring it here to Georgia Southern. I'm not really concerned about other, any other school right now except for Georgia Southern. And so having a chance to come in with, I feel very confident, a good healthy baseline in some different areas that I can bring them in here and then assess and implement as needed. Um, I just think that's a tremendous baseline. Another thing too is when, uh, when adversity hits and when things happen, part of that's having that experience to know how to handle stuff. And so having been very blessed to, to work with a lot of great people have given me that experience. And so it's prepared me ultimately for this job today. So. All right, thank you. Hell Southern.